This is a tour of the Web Studio workspace. During this tour, I will show you how to access the commands, work with the galleries, the ribbon, the pages, and the page list. You will also learn how to customize the workspace. When you open Web Studio, the center of the workspace is blank. This area is filled when you start a new project or open an existing one. I'll start a new project. This places a blank piece of paper on the page with a tab that's labeled Untitled 1. Only one project at a time can be open in the workspace. If you want to view more than one project at a time, simply open another instance of the program to get a new workspace. Let's look at the basic layout of Web Studio. Along the top of the screen is an area that's known as the ribbon. The ribbon contains commands you need to complete a task. The commands are grouped together under tabs, and each tab describes the commands that are grouped within it. For instance, the Forms tab contains all of the commands you need to make forms. The Web Studio button, the Quick Access toolbar, and the Caption bar are positioned along the ribbon. We will look at those later. The galleries are on the left of the workspace, and the tabs describe the contents within each gallery. The page list is over on the right. This is where you will see a list of the pages in your project. The titles in the page list match the page titles in the center of the workspace. Now let's look at each area individually. We will start with the ribbon. The ribbon commands are located together under tabs. The commands in the tabs are put into groups. Each group has a name. When you make your screen or your workspace smaller, the commands are collapsed within the group and the group name is displayed. Let me just show you. As you can see, the buttons group has a little arrow and when you click on the arrow you can then see the, the commands that are placed under the buttons group. When I enlarge my workspace, the groups spread out again and have enough room to show every command in the group. If I want to hide the ribbon, I simply double click on one of the tabs. When I want to see the ribbon again, I double click again to expand it. Each group has a link to a video tutorial that shows you how to use the commands in that group. Click the arrow at the bottom right corner of each group to view the tutorial. It opens in a new page on the workspace. After you're done watching the video, you can click the X to close the tutorial and return to your workspace. The Help section is contained on the right-hand side of the Home tab. It has several links that will help you to use Web Studio, such as the documentation and a link to our online wiki. This is also where you will find information about your program. When you click on About Web Studio, it will open a dialog and you can see over here which version and which build you are using. In the upper left hand corner of the screen is the Web Studio button. When you click on the button you will get a drop down list of commands. At the bottom is a button that takes you to the Options dialog. This dialog is where you can set some global preferences. For instance, this is where you can choose to add and remove underlines for links. After you choose the preferences, they will be applied to the whole project. Next to the Web Studio button is the Quick Access Toolbar. This contains some of the most common commands and keeps them in a handy place. Web Studio places a selection of commands by default and you can customize them with your favorite commands. Click on the arrow to the right and you can see that it contains a list of the commands that are on the toolbar. 
These are the ones that Web Studio provides for you. If you would like to remove one, you simply click to remove the check. The command is then removed from the Quick Access Toolbar. If you want it back again, you simply click again. You can also add or remove any commands by using the More Commands feature. When this feature opens, it gives you a list on the right hand side of everything that is on the toolbar. You can choose something to remove it, or you can choose something to add. When you're all done, click OK or click Recess to go back to the default settings. Another way to add a command to the toolbar is to go to the command in the ribbon and right click. Choose Add to Quick Access Toolbar. You can reposition the toolbar to show underneath the ribbon instead of above it. Click the arrow, choose Show Below the Ribbon, and it will move your commands to the bottom. To move them back up, click again and choose Show Above the Ribbon. The caption bar is below the ribbon. This area displays helpful information that is connected to the movement of your mouse on the page. For instance, when I move the mouse over the background gallery, a message is displayed in the bar that says double click on this thumbnail to view the subfolder. On the right hand side of the caption bar is the website properties dialog. Click on the button to open up the dialog that contains a lot of information that you will apply to your website. If you cannot find the Website Properties button, it's probably because the caption bar is hidden. The way to turn the caption bar back on is to go to the View tab and click Caption Bar. The caption bar is back and the Web Studio Properties button is on the right. Now let's look at the galleries. They are located on the left side of the workspace. A tab describes the content in each of the galleries. For instance, when you click Photos, you get a selection of photos that are built into the program that you can use for design. If you see a little folder in the corner, it means that there is a sub-gallery within the gallery. This is just an easier way of grouping together the content and makes it easier for you to find. If you see a little folder, just double-click and that will open the content of the sub-gallery. You will know that you're in a sub-gallery if you see the little open folder at the top toward the tab. To close the sub-gallery, simply click the little folder closed. You can customize the way you view the galleries. Move your mouse over the divider until it turns into double arrows. Then click and drag to the right and see more icons in the gallery. Do the same thing and drag to the left to go back to the single view. There are two choices for the size of the icons in the gallery, large and small. Go to the View tab and go over to the left hand side and click Small Galleries. Notice the little icons in the gallery become small. I click again to enlarge them. You can enlarge the workspace by hiding the galleries and there is a couple of ways to do that. At the top of the galleries is a little icon that looks like a pin. When the pin is vertical, this means that the galleries are pinned open. Click on this pin and the galleries will collapse, leaving only a tab on the side of the page. When you move your mouse over the tab, it displays the galleries momentarily and then they hide again when you move your mouse away. If you want to open the galleries again, move your mouse over the tab, go to the little pin and click it so that it goes back into a vertical position and pins your gallery open. Even when your gallery is collapsed, you can access the content. When you're done, 
the gallery will collapse again. You can also customize the placement of the galleries in the workspace. I'm going to pin this open. And I'm going to move it to the other side of the page. I'm going to click and drag the top of the gallery until I see some arrows in the middle of my page. I'll move my mouse over the right hand arrow and then I'll release. The galleries are then moved to the right hand side. To move them back, I click and drag, move my mouse to the left hand arrow, and release. The galleries can be moved to any place on the page that you see the arrows. The page list is on the right and it works the same way that the galleries work. I can enlarge it, I can make it smaller, and I can move it to the other side of the page and move it back. Now let's look at the pages on the workspace. I'm going to add a few more pages so that we have something to work with. Now we have four pages open and I'm going to add some color to the pages because I think it will be easier for you to see the next steps. When you're working in Web Studio, one page at a time is displayed in the workspace. Page number one is on the top and if I want to work on page number two, I click on that tab and that brings page number two to the top, or three, or four. When I've clicked on a page and it comes to the top, it's also highlighted in the page list. If I click on three, three becomes highlighted. If you would like, you can split the workspace so that you can see two or more pages at a time. One way to do that is by right-clicking over a tab and making what's called a new tab group. I'll make a new vertical tab group out of number four. Now you see that page four is on the right and the other pages are on the left. I can add another new vertical group or I can add one to an existing group. I can put them back by right-clicking and moving to a previous group. And now I'm back using one page. I can also make a horizontal tab group. This places pages on top of one another instead of side by side. Another thing I can do is I can just pull down one of these tabs and when I see that the mouse has turned into a little document icon, I can release it and that creates a group. I can add to the group by dragging. I'm going to left click on number three and drag it over here to be next to number four. I can add and subtract and move things back and forth, create groups, and go back to single page view. The split page feature is very nice when you want to browse the internet. You can go up to view, and under view is a browse internet command. Click on the command, and the internet opens up in a new window with an address bar and the browsing controls. Since I want to use this side by side, I'm going to go ahead and put this in a new vertical tab group. Now I can look at the internet right within my workspace while working on my page. This is very nice because one of the features of this is that I can grab a graphic from the internet and simply drag it over onto my page. When I'm done, I can just click on the X and close that page. I want to mention at this time that in addition to the commands along the ribbon, every object has a right click menu that tells you what commands are available and you can use that instead of the ribbon. I'm going to go back to the galleries and pin them open, 
go to Photos, double click to open the sub gallery, and I'm going to pull out three photos. I'll take one of these photos and I'll resize it. While that is selected, I'll hold down the Shift key and click on the other two photos so that all three of them are selected. Now I can go to Page Layout, go to the Make Equal group, and select Height to make them all the same height. Or I can come down here and right click over my photo, go to the Make Equal command, and choose Make Equal Height. If you're ever in doubt about what you can do with an object on the page, simply right click on it. The final command I want to talk to you about is the print command that is located in the Web Studio button. The way that Web Studio works is that it uses Internet Explorer to send out information. Sometimes Explorer causes the window to open behind the program instead of in front of the program. This time it opened in front of the program, but sometimes it will open behind. If you click on print and you do not see the print preview window, minimize your program so that you can see the window behind it. This will also happen with thumbnails. When someone is viewing a website on the internet and they click on a thumbnail and then they go to click on another one because they can't see the thumbnail, it's usually because that particular thumbnail opened up in a new window that was placed behind the browser. I hope this tour was valuable and thank you very much for watching.